here as usual. Let me make some adjustments here. Bring this light in a little closer. Yeah, that's a little bit better. So we can see each other a little bit nicer here. How is everybody doing out there? So glad to see everybody in the live chat. Ben here. Welcome, Ben. Thank you so much for showing up. Always, brother, supporting this channel. That really means a lot to me. Uh, Sunday at Mike's, guys. Another week has gone by. Starting another one. <laughs> they just keep rolling. But uh, we're here, and that's a good thing. Dewey's here. Hey, welcome, sir. How you doing? Thank you for showing up, supporting the channel. As we wait for more people to show up here in the live stream, as usual, I will start out by thanking everybody for supporting this channel by watching the live streams, by watching the regular content, by um, just uh, being a good uh, friend to this channel, by sharing a little bit of your valuable time. Time is a valuable commodity. And the fact that you'll spend a little bit of yours with me is greatly appreciated. So thank you so much. Um, yeah, you know, it is, um, another week gone by, <laughs> uh, those packages that, uh, I have, uh, Mr. Watson in the house, Mr. Newman in the house, same time. Welcome gentlemen. Thank you so much for showing up. Oh, there I am. Now I can see how I'm framed here. Oh, this is good. I like this. Yeah. Um, uh, those packages, uh, those uh, guitars from Japan have shipped out. So I'm in that nervous uh, nail-biting phase <laughs> where until, this, until now, until I open up the box, and I won't know, you know, it's like Schrodinger's cat. It's either broken or not, <laughs> or not broken. <laughs> it's Schrodinger's guitar case. <laughs> So this is actually my first time shipping a bass guitar. I have a Fender bass coming. So that uh, makes me a little nervous. But again, like I said, uh, the Japanese are so great at packing things uh, for international shipping that uh, it's, it's kind of worry-free almost. It's, it's really the guys on this end <laughs> in their heavy hands that I'm a little bit worried about. So we will knock on wood, or at least uh, this uh, whatever this composite we have here with this desk, and we'll hope that things work out with that. I think they will. They usually do. Um, yeah. You know, I was uh, enjoying some decent weather here. Uh, we finally got some good weather here uh, the last two days, Saturday and Sunday. And um, today I was doing a little bit of gardening out on my deck, getting it ready for the summer and for deck parties, people coming over, things like that. And uh, I started thinking, well, you got to come up with uh, a subject for tonight. It was relatively easy today uh, for tonight's uh, uh, topic. Now, generally, since we do two live streams a week, we do one, of course, Sunday at Mike's. Here we're doing Sunday night, 11 p.m. Central European time. I'm based in Amsterdam. And then we do another one on Wednesday night at 11 p.m. You know, same time, same bat channel, same bat channel. And uh, I uh, stick to one topic per uh, live stream, and tonight will be no different. Um, I started thinking about you know, there's been a lot of YouTube videos that have been discussing the current rise of cost of guitars. I myself included chipped in on that. <laughs> I think I pounded in on that conversation once or twice. I'm about to again, but as a as a rule of thumb, I like to approach certain things uh, from different angles. And uh, when I was gardening, I thought of a different angle to look at this tonight. Uh, it's going to be dry <laughs> statistics tonight. I'm sorry. Uh, it, that side of me is going to come out tonight, the dry statistics, but I think it would be food for thought for you guys. You know, I told you I broke a, a molar quite a while back. Do you know that I still haven't had it fixed yet? You know, it, it bothers when I'm talking, especially like this, you know, gets in the way, uh, a side of it. They told me that they can't see me until June. It is, you know, that's how 
the dental system here in the Netherlands is at this moment. And I've been putting up with, I thank you guys for putting up with it. When I talk, sometimes it does get in the way. The, the, the dentist, she did look at it uh, before she told me she couldn't see me to fix it for another few months. <laughs> she said she could repair it. But uh, yeah, so bear with me. I'm a little thick tongue tonight. Sometimes it's all right. Sometimes it's not. Uh, but pain in the butt, nevertheless. I learned my lesson there. <laughs> I'm too old to be biting down on hard candy. <laughs> I've, I've finally reached that stage, gentlemen. <laughs> and you will too. <laughs> so it's a little bit of a warning. <laughs> Watch what you eat in your 50s. Um, although I have relatively good teeth. I, I've, I've never had a cavity. So there is that. But... Uh, I thought about everybody tripping off the notion of the increase in prices. Michael Watson, I heard that. (laughs) Just a little warning I'm throwing out there. You don't have to take it. A little bit of advice (laughs) to you youngins out there, or maybe some of them not so. To be aware, even if you've got a good set of chompers, uh, you can't mess them up at a certain point in time. <laughs> and boy, if I own that lesson, I will never do that again. Especially when I know how long it takes to get uh, the, the work done here. It's, you know. She said, well, we could just pull it out. I said, no, it's fine. She, you know, it would be quicker to do that. <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> it's like, well, you don't need that hand necessarily. I know the finger's broken on it. And we can get around to fixing that in a couple of months, but in the meanwhile, just to be quicker, you know, <laughs> I was like, no, we'll wait. That's hilarious. Um, inflation rate. So tonight's uh, title is in the guitar market, $1,200 is a new 500 Now, this is not an original thought of mine. I was reading somebody's comment section on a YouTube channel. And somebody made that statement, said, gentlemen, you're just going to have to get used to the fact that in the guitar market, 1200 is the new 500. And I thought to myself, okay, that's an interesting thought. (laughs) And uh, it has the whiff of validity to it. Maddie, too, has rock and roll. How you doing? Good to see you, sir. Um, Heidi Ho, as Mr. Hankey says. and I thought to myself, okay, let's test that for tonight's uh, premise, for tonight's live stream, and uh, apply it in a way that we could all kind of take a look at and understand. Um, so, uh, first of all, I want to start out by saying, hold on, I need to put some data in here that I should have done before I got started. You guys will forgive me that. All right, good. Um, There are a lot of opinions out there as to why certain companies are rising, are raising the prices on their instruments in the guitar market. A lot of theories. Um, Some of them, especially when they're grounded in uh, just the markets themselves, and not, you know, any, you know, speculation, wild speculation. Yeah, those are the ones that I think they're generally closer to the mark as to why this is going on. And um, I thought about that, you know, 1200 is the new 500. Basically what he's saying is that, you know, what what we would consider to be a good $500 guitar now is going to cost you at these days is $1,200. And uh, that's true, you know. And uh, inflation raises its ugly head uh, as a qualifier in his statement and in my kind of co-signing on it. Because um, we can plug in some numbers and look at a guitar like a Les Paul. Let's, let's just use a Gibson Les Paul as a good starting point. 
um, and say to ourselves, okay, what was a Les Paul going, at what point in what year could $500 buy you a Les Paul? And you would think to yourself automatically, well, that'll put you somewhere in the 70s. And you would not be completely incorrect, although it would put you in the late 70s, well going into the 80s, that you could get a USA-made Les Paul Standard uh, for $500. Um, FRC, totally right. Inflation is everywhere and it's impacting the guitar market like everything else. I also think the pandemic boom is somehow playing a role. Well, thank you, FRC, for being here tonight. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much for showing up and chiming in. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, certainly the pandemic boom uh, led to a what I would call a secondhand market bust. Um, and of course, that big surge of guitars that just went out there, uh, 400% in the case of Fender, in terms of sales for that time period, uh, a lot of guys are selling those off. And uh, they are new, a lot of them are new to the market. A lot of them don't necessarily have to get rid of them quickly because they were bought with government money that was free money anyway. So they can put them out there and for whatever price. And that generally has, has led to a, a, a damaging of the ecosystem, a, a oil spill, if you will, in the gulf of uh, the secondhand market. And so, yeah, there is that. Uh, Tommy Max in the house. Hey, man, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here, Tommy. I'm glad you're here live. Thank you. Uh, continuing on from FRC, companies had boom years. They are now falling off drastically, agreed. I think they got overextended and are now needing to charge more money to cover their own increasing overhead. Well, um, yeah, I'm going to back that up with some, with, uh, some uh, statistics here and some information. Now, um, again, getting back to that Les Paul and that statement that 500 is the, or 1200 is the new 500. And I thought to myself, uh, what, what year uh, period of time could one obtain uh, USA made Les Paul for $500? And what were they going for on average uh, during that same period? From the late 70s, well into the mid 80s, you could get a Les Paul standard for $850 new. Uh, on the used secondhand market, they were going for roughly five to six fifty, five hundred to six fifty. Now, uh, okay, so there we have a time period, a period of time uh, from nineteen eighty, let's just say, until twenty twenty four. And of course, we will have to ask ourselves um, what would the inflation rate, what factor would inflation play on that guitar? That's just, again, an imaginary world where we can take uh, that guitar, that 1980 guitar, uh, and move it forward to now. Uh, well, actually, it, since it is a, a tangible item, we can't actually do that. But in, in this experiment, uh, what would be the uh, cost differential between that and a current one, a time machine kind of scenario, I guess is what I'm trying to set up here. And what you would find is that on average, that $500 guitar that you bought in 1980, now with an inflation rate uh, would cost you uh, $1,883 with a cumulative rate of inflation of 276% between 1980 to 2024. So that means that that 1980 guitar and today with the inflation being compounded upon it has a value of around $1,800, $1,900 if it's in its brand new condition, if, it, if we were to bring that forward. If we were to compare that with its contemporary uh, brethren, 
we would find that the cost uh, exceeds that by on average about a thousand dollars. So there is a markup there above that infl- that what the rate of inflation states the cost of that guitar should be on the second hand market. Okay, we're not talking if we did eight fifty, it would be a slightly higher. But using that second hand market, that that fifteen uh, that five hundred dollar uh, uh, level. Uh, we would find that uh, on the secondhand market, people are asking on average about $1,000 more. The 26 to 28 people want for Les Pauls. Are they going for that? Interestingly, no, they're not. As I pointed out a couple of live streams ago, they're actually going for, surprise, surprise, around $1,900. <laughs> if you go on to Reverb, and take a look at for what not what for what people were asking, uh, what FRC was uh, alluding to there, for uh, the, the secondary markets, but what they're actually going for. Wow, they're actually going for their true rate of inflation, what they would really be, you know, what they really should be at. Now, uh, let's continue this exercise a little bit more and take a look at that new guitar. And I think here is where we're going to see um, the inflation is everywhere, as FRC said, impacting the guitar market like everything else. I also think the pandemic moves some up. I'm sorry. Companies had boom years that are now falling off drastically. I think they got overextended and are now needing to charge more money to cover their own increasing overhead. Well, let's test that. Let's test that. Let's see. So we know that uh, a brand new in 1980, it's very easy to just go into the catalogs, <laughs> you know, uh, go into your old Gibson catalogs and you can see the prices. So this was $850 on average. And actually it dropped down to an average of, uh, of $750 uh, around $83, 84 85 So it actually went down. But I'm going to go on the high end on this one. I'm going to say, okay, let's just do the... From 1978 till around 1982 or so, you get one for, so 1980 is the median, 850 bucks is the price there. So what do we got going there? Well, interestingly enough, uh, <clears throat> what you have there is uh, a cumulative rate of inflation of, again, 276%. That hasn't changed. But the item would cost $3,200, 3200 which is about the going price that you would find for brand new Les Paul these days. Surprise, surprise. So there is no markup per se, even less. Actually, in some cases, you can find them for even less than that, you know, new. Um, certainly here in the Netherlands, uh, the Gibson uh, shop uh, is blowing them out all the time. A lot of them are demo models. But still, you know, so no, there's, you know, the rate of inflation for that guitar, pulling it ahead, like I said, in our time machine, comparing it to to contemporary, we see that there's no great real big markup there. As a matter of fact, uh, with the rate of inflation, in some cases, you get a new one for even less, a little bit less. Now, (laughs) I have been kind (laughs) so far. I have been kind so far, and I have not railed on them because if we put in the data regarding ep- and, and flip it over to Epiphones, there, my friends, is where we're going to find the B4 uh, mentioned by the FRC, their uh, markup, the dramatic, dramatic markup. I think you guys can see that. Um, but before we do that, Um, the dry information. (laughs) So uh, what is perceived inflation? Uh, This is from statistics.org. And um, opinions about rising prices are as old as money itself. Today, they are often documented in surveys which report that people's perceptions of inflation are frequently higher than measured inflation. In other words, we think things are a lot higher than they actually are. But why is this the case? And there are some possible answers to that question. 
uh, price rises catch our attention more. Now, we can certainly say that, especially in the case of the rapid increase of prices we've seen in the Inspired by Gibson Epiphone line uh, from when they first started. Um, so that caught our attention <laughs> out here in YouTube land. We, uh, we said, okay, you know, and even I myself, I said, is this, you know, the old fogey mic coming out? Oh, these kids don't know that we used to get those for two cents a penny back in the day, you know, <laughs> two cents on the dollar. <laughs> I didn't want to be that guy. Uh, I, 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 you know, I, I didn't want to look at it like that because I understand that that would be under the, the def very definition of a perceived inflation in scenario in my mind. Although we tend to take less notice of stable or declining prices, they too are included in the calculation of the average inflation rate. So, you know, we may be attention to paying attention to, to the fact that, um, that the Epiphones are rising in, in value, but my understanding over in the UK, the price of Marshall's uh, some Marshall amplifiers uh, that were being offered for, let's just say, roughly 700 pounds, they disappeared off the market. And when they were brought back into the market, they were brought in at 1,400 pounds. <laughs> and that's, that's not a, a first, that's just a shocking, just flat out, you know, a shocker, you know. So it's not just, you know, we're not all crazy. I'm, I'm not saying that, and ne neither is this. But uh, on the, again, on the opposite side, the, some things are going down. The, the price of gas has gone down, uh, although we had that, that spike the other day, so that may not be true. But um, other things are going down, and it kind of balances out. We pay more attention to the prices. We pay for frequent out-of-pocket purchases then to prices of infrequent purchases and to direct debits. Uh, in other words, monthly bills, things like that. And, uh, you know, I, this one is a weird one for us because <laughs> gas kicks in to the equation on this statement <laughs> because some of us, you know, myself included, are purchasing guitars uh, monthly, monthly uh, for different reasons. And so... We got our ear to the ground a little bit more than the average consumer, the, the boom, the pandemic boom consumer buyer of guitars, for example, who may have just you know shot their figurative load uh, of government cash and bought what they were going to buy. And that's it. Um, if they did step out again and try to buy the same thing, they too might find sh shocking that the price of whatever that was has increased as well. So there is that. Uh, it just depends upon where you sit in the equation. Um, so it goes on, it goes on. Uh, I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, Matty Two Hats, uh, petrol here in Australia is insane. It's, uh, tr it's tripled the last five years. It's 220 a liter, my God. So that's, uh, 880 uh, a gallon. Uh, you guys in the States sit there and chew on that one. Then do you want to pay $8.80 a gallon of gas? <laughs> there would be riots. In the, and, and think of the impact that would have at the supermarkets, you know, and things like that. And again, that's what that was alluding to as well, is that there are different things in our day-to-day -day expenditures that we pay more attention to than others. Now, I'm sure the guys over on the golf YouTube channels don't give two, you know, craps about the price of a Les Paul, <laughs> but they may give two craps about the price of whatever driver is that week that they've got to have that's like gold encrusted with diamonds on the handle, you know, or something like that. <laughs> I'm sure they have that stuff. Um, but especially if rappers got involved but in golfing. <laughs> But uh, you have to think to yourself, um, if these things are true, and that I've demonstrated here, that Gibson's and their used prices and their news prices really aren't too far off the mark. And you'd be, and by the way, in the used market, 
So that means that your goal is to obtain a Les Paul standard around $1,900 US or less, or less. If you go a penny more than that, then you are paying, you know, it better be some really, you know, quadruple A top, you know, quilted top, you know, that uh, was blessed by Jimmy Page, because if not, then, you know, you're being a little foolish. You should always know what the bid is on something. And the bid on a used Les Paul right now is eighteen is $1,900, basically. And anything more than that, don't do it. Um, <clears throat> and that goes across the board. Now, if we apply that to Epiphones, um, I'm not even going to dignify my my fingers on the end by typing that that over here into the calculator because the reality is is that there the woods of that 1980 the wood the pickups actually in the case of the pickups some of those 1980 pickups like t-tops and things of that nature actually in themselves have gone up in value so if they the pickup if you took the pickups out of that and just put anything else, it would still hold its value in the secondary market, but those pickups them themselves have a value. And, 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 and the guitar with the value of those pickups in it has a little bit more. There, there is where you can negotiate uh, a little bit more than that uh, $1,900, uh, if that's the case, in the secondary market. That would be a good time where you can do that, and that would be the only exception. That would be it, only because of the pickups, because of that time, T-Tops, uh, Bill Lawrence pickups that they had in there, a lot of those are, 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 are growing to be as novel as an original set of, of 58, 59, I'm sorry, 57, 58, 59, 60 uh, on uh, humbuckers. So there's that. And uh, so... The wood, the, the, the woods that were used, um, the mahogany, the maple, whether it was one piece, two piece, three piece, or whatever, how the constructions, because during that period of time, the constructions changed, but it still had the same formula of the quality. They were quality woods. Again, there's grades of woods. I have mahogany B I can sell you for 50 cents. I've got mahogany A I can sell you for a dollar fifty. Well, it was the dollar fifty one they were using over there in USA made Gibsons and the, the maples and the rosewoods and the tuners and all the electronics and stuff like that were all of high quality. Now, with the inspired by Gibson line that you're getting nowadays, you're getting some of those uh, things because they are starting to put in the guts of the USA models into the Epiphones. But the woods, especially when you consider the fact that they're using Indian laurel uh, for the fretboards as opposed to rosewoods on, you would find on a USA standard, you have to ask yourself, looking at that opening statement, 1200 is the new 500, what justifies the 12? 14 or whatever cost, the 1299 cost it is for that new inspired by Gibson, the latest inspired by Gibson 59. Because the woods there are the same as the ones, the one that I bought or the ones that have been produced up to this point. There's no difference in the wood there. Um, the only difference is there are in the electronics. Case is the same. It's not like They've, they've updated the case. So even if you throw that in, um, if you look at the inflation on, on that and, um, and just calculate from that time period of the rate of inflation from, tw from when that was introduced in 2020, 2021 till now, it doesn't justify that increase either. It doesn't. So... What is there other than the upgraded electronics that is demanding the higher premium on this inspired by Gibson line that Epiphone has come at? If you look at it purely from the numbers, there's nothing there in the inflation that would justify it. Uh, there just isn't. Um, 
Hold on. Yeah. Let's see here. Yeah. I paid 700 uh, euros. Uh, I'm sorry, $700 basically I, at that time. Yeah, it was about the same. $700 for my uh, Epiphone 1959 guitar in 2020, 2020-2021. Um, even taking that number, going from that 2021 period to now, you have an, a less than a 20% uh, cumulative rate of inflation, and that item now would be around $830 in value. Okay. So, um, yeah, there's a big leap there that you have to justify, justify between $830 and that $1,299 or more, actually, in some, depending upon <laughs> what your zip code is <laughs> in the world. <laughs> And the cost on that, there's a big, see, there's no gap there, as I pointed out, in the used market, with the Les Paul Standard USA made, either in the used market or in the new market, if you're looking at it from the inflation rates. But there's a huge gap there in value between um, what they were charging for that 59 and what you're getting now. Big, big Big leap in value there. Maddie, two hat. Uh, I'm sorry, FRC. How about this? Has the stigma of owning an import guitar started to decline? Import guitars have gotten so good in the automated manufacturing age. Well, yeah. You know, when you got CNC machines, basically, and you could send the templates over, to, you know, to whatever country you want to set it up, get it dialed in. That takes time. It's not a, an overnight thing. But once it gets dialed in, yeah, you're rocking and rolling. That's why, um, you know, th th there was a decline in the quality of Gibson's because Gibson was not investing in their own infrastructure as much as interesting enough they were investing in the infrastructure over at Epiphone in China when they set up the Guangzhou uh, uh, factory. And uh, so uh, that's in real life, you know, that kind of played out, you know, even within that one company. Um, and in terms of the stigma of owning import guitars, this is the channel <laughs> of, 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 of anti, you know, we, we don't care about headstocks here, you know, and we, we are preachers of, of, of not really caring about that. It's the, it, again, tonight I'm setting the stage and I'm making an argument and you guys know I'm, I always, I'm going somewhere with this. And I guess that, uh. At 32 minutes, I guess that's a good place to start. Um, is about again, I'm hammering on that quality. Uh, you know, the issue of, of value and, and quality, or, and particularly, actually, where is the value there? Where is the value there? You know, and if the value there is something that you have to perceive because they changed the headstock then, you know, you're getting reamed there <laughs> on that one. Just from the numbers. I'm just telling you. I'm sorry. Just from the numbers. Just from the numbers. FRC, you can calmly get a good guitar for 300 bucks with decent features. Agreed. Stay, yeah, we, uh, Harley Benton. Harley Benton is knocking them out. Those guitars are made in Indonesia. Some of the same uh, factories that are pumping out PRS is a uh, secondary line. And, uh, you know. You don't you know, do hear a lot of complaints other than, you know, the standard ones from about those. Pretty much well the same across the board. So, uh, yeah, I agree. Don Juan Campbell in the house. Don Juan, welcome, sir. How you doing? Long time no see. Long work day. I feel you, brother. I uh, hope everyone's doing well. We're all doing well. We hope you're doing well, man. Get some rest when you can. FRC, Mike. Do you think the import guitar is getting better, is putting pressure on USA makers to get better? Well, the pressure from import guitar makers extends back to the 1970s with the so-called there never was lawsuit guitars. <laughs> um, 
the uh just this there's no such thing as lawsuit guitars i've covered this before there's no when you hear about lawsuit guitars ask them what's the lawsuit in particular that you're speaking of and people will say uh you know gibson sued like japanese guitar makers no 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 you had the norland corporation which was the owner of gibson at that time sue a japanese company that was the owner of ibanez and it wasn't a sue by the way it was a cease and desist order so no lawsuit there, just to see a basically a piece of paper that says, could you please stop making these excellent, wonderful guitars that are showing us up and make us look terrible right now? <laughs> and the Japanese guy's are like, oh, we already kind of changed the headstocks on those. And so therefore it got brushed away. So that pressure has been there since the 70s, in my opinion. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah. Don Juan Campbell. Squires seem to be seem to fall into that category of the new standard of cheap guitars that are decent and being used by working musicians. Yes. I again I, I applaud Fender. You know, I will, you know, knock them when I knock them, but I'll praise them when I praise them. And and in their squire line, they have hit the sweet spot. If they can resist the urge to, you know, uh, ridiculously bump up the price and stay away from signature models, which are the kiss of death. And we'll talk about that someday. You know, that's a good title. Maybe the next live stream will be signature models, kiss of death, you know. And the answer is yes. Uh, but anyway, I digress. Um, Squire has done a wonderful job. I own a Squire. I've got their Telecaster sitting here in a bag behind me. And I um, would buy another Squire. Well, I've got, you know, my two, not my, what am I talking about? I've got uh, three, uh, two Squire uh, Telecasters, um, uh, Stratocasters as well. I love Squires. And I think that for the price and, uh, and then the fact that you can, you know, disassemble them, take them apart and, and do things with them, uh, makes them a fantastic buy all the way around for everybody. There's something for everybody there. And, uh, and at that value, at that price, you can come out with something really nice. I wish everybody, I, I really do. So I got no problem with Squires. I had a big problem with that big gap of, you know, what really, with inflation, you know, that really should be an $830 guitar, but they're charging $1299. And in my case, I think it's $1499 now. Uh, so more than double uh, over here in Europe. Um, for the same guitar with a different headstock. So is that justifying that big gap there? No, I do not think so. There again, the reason why, and I, that's why I talked about perceived inflation, but but there's something in here about perceived value as well. I think a lot of us. Um, and the reason why we're feeling a little queasy about this new uh, inspired by Gibson line prices, you know, you can still get a 50 standard Epiphone, you know, for now. The yeah, everybody says, well, you can still get a 50, a 50 or a 60 model. Yeah, you can get them for now. But what if they drop, discontinue that line and they just continue, they just go with the inspired by line? Then where are you at? And I do believe that that may be the direction they're going. But our the reason we feel queasy about it and have a, 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 a feeling that more than just a perceived inflation on it is because there's a perceived value issue there. There's a perceived value issue there. See, there's something in us that says, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on, wait, hold on, wait, 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 wait. I just bought, I, I read one guy, he said, hey, I just bought the, uh, just this within this week, he said, "I just bought the '59, the older model. The new one hadn't come, hadn't hit his store yet. I just bought the older one, and then I come home and I find out that this is coming out. You know, here in a minute. You know, uh, what the hell? Well, he said, at least I got this one. It, the, the older one is cheaper. So there, you have, uh." Again, a person in the real world showing a value of perception. You know, saying, well, you know, 
Yeah, I guess, you know, but I just bought kind of the same thing. The headstock's different. So, wow, I'm glad I this one might, you know, you know <laughs> is that headstock really going to make that guitar sound any different than the one that I just bought? And he decided no. And uh, it's because that, that value perception. See, there's a big gap in the real value of that guitar, in my opinion, if you apply the inflation rate on what it should be. And there's also a big gap in the value in terms of perception uh, as well. And um, so uh, that's why you, we're, we're feeling queasy about it out here in YouTube land. Uh, that's why we can't go a day without seeing somebody chime in on this. It's because we all have a collective queasy feeling but it's really based upon the fact that we have a perception, a value perception problem with the proposition that uh, Epiphone is making, Gibson, I'm sorry, Gibson Epiphone is making to us. It, it, it rises above just the ordinary um, uh, inflational perception. Uh, it gets into a value perception. And I always talk about value perceptions because it's very important. You know, a 1959 Les Paul, uh, when it came out, I'm talking about a real 1959 Les Paul standard, uh, when it came out, would cost you a princely sum in 1959 of $250. So, 1959. U.S. dollars, 250 and away we go. Um, the cumulative rate of inflation would be a, a astounding almost 1,000%. <laughs> oh, boy, man. When you fall off a gold standard, you are just taking a nosedive to the bottom. You guys, anyway, I'm not going to get into that. That's, that's for another channel. <laughs> um, but that item would cost, in today's value, uh, $2,666. So interestingly enough, wait a minute. Well, from 1980 to 2024, it was 3000 But from 1959 to 20, so let's see again, like I said. It, it, <laughs> but it stays within a range, though. It does stay within a range. But this would be on a, on a low end. So why is it, you say to me, that those bad boys are going for $400,000 because there is a perceived value on those. There's a, there is a strong, the force is strong with this one. <laughs> There's such a perceived value with that guitar that it, in, 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 in everybody's mind, if somebody said to you, and I don't care who you are, and you can say, oh, I don't care about that. But somebody walked up to you and said, hey, I'm going to give you a 59 Les Paul. You know, here you go. You would be pleased as a possum for a, for a variety of reasons, depending upon who you are. But very few would kick that one out of bed is the point of that. Um, we have, because we have a value perception on that. The numbers don't back that up. So everything above this number is the value perception and what we're willing and what we see fit to what that's worth. You dig what I'm saying? We do not cumulatively have a good feeling about the Inspired by Gibson line, regardless of its cheerleaders, I guess is a kind word. Uh, because, uh, again, the inflation numbers don't bear out the value that they're proposing, the value proposition. The value proposition, again, like I said, is a poor one. We just feel it, you know. And tonight, we've gone through this. We've broken down the numbers. Now we can see why we feel that way. <laughs> because it's, it's backed up. And so... Um, Really, what do you do with that? Well, you know, 
I walk away. <laughs> I walk away from that. Because as 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 has been stated here by our um, our great community we have it. We have such a wonderful live stream community. And thank you guys so much for showing up all the time and supporting and helping out this live stream with your thoughts and comments. Um you know, we all have could walk away. We all kind of basically in our minds, so more or less. Some of us are like, okay. To, to some of us, it's and, and this is not an issue of do I can I afford it? And a lot of people turn to well, if you can't afford it, don't look at it. Well, you know, maybe we can. But you're you're not gonna buy a pinto with a you know with a Porsche engine, in it, you know, for a million dollars. <laughs> you know, it's not gonna happen. You know. <laughs> so I don't care rich or poor the value perception is a value perception you know and a guy becomes wealthy by the way by making sound value perceptions not unwise ones <laughs> I love YouTube uh, I don't watch a lot of TV because I don't like the, 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 the DEI garbage that they put out these days hey Frederick Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. I don't like watching that stuff. I don't, I don't want to have that because, you know, uh, it's not of interest to me. But I like watching YouTube. And there's these two guys who have one of those red pill channels uh, where they're always uh, talking about stay away from loose women and, and uh, don't do this and don't do that. And sure enough, one of those guys ended up getting you know, which one would describe as that type of woman knocked up. <laughs> so do as I say, not as I do. And in certain parts of YouTube this week, that's been a topic of discussion, discussion and it's just cracked me up. It's cracked me up because, again, um, we're really only as good as our word really when it comes down to it and uh the way that we move the way that we all of us individually the way that we put ourselves out there you know well we were born half a cookie i like to, I've, I've come to learn to say we're born half a cookie and we're trying to find that other half that that makes it a whole and some of those pathways that we think will do that are not always good some of them are good some of them are not but the point of this is that uh we in a broader sense you know uh as a youtuber i have to keep it real 100 percent. if i say it i do it the other thing is is that um we have to protect our perceptions as well and uh our what we consume and in these price increases and the propaganda and the things that people will put out there when it comes to the reasonings behind these price increases on these some of these guitar lines. Some of them are decreasing. We'll talk about those another time. But um, if you, again, if you're knowledgeable, if you're filtering uh, through that filter of knowledge, uh, then you don't care about the headstock. You care about the value proposition. Then you're looking at value. Then you're looking at uh, quality. Same thing, you know, well, some of those YouTube channels that I look at are quality, but they sure do crack me up. But, and in my media, the things that I watch, you know, shows that I'm like, I'm watching uh, Shogun right now. Love it. Wonderful. You know, uh, beautiful production. But I filter a lot of things because, again, I don't want, I don't, I, you know, I don't want, you know, somebody else's perceptions to try to be imparted upon me, uh, especially forced upon me. And the same thing comes to, you know, these guitar prices. And uh, Epiphone is forcing this, not forcing you to buy. But they are strongly moving in a direction that is forcing the Epiphone friendly buyer to make moves that they may not want to make. 
you know. Yeah, well, believe it or not, there are actually Epiphone fanboys out there. <laughs> of course there are. Of course they are. Well, you should see the Gibson Epiphone, Gibson fanboys and Epiphone fanboys on some forums get into each other. That's always a comical read. But again, uh, a little bit of knowledge is the point of that, guys, tonight. A little bit of knowledge, a little bit of feel, and using that knowledge to filter how people are throwing stuff at you. Because they're throwing at you from so many directions. Mickey Newman, main, I'm sorry, Don Juan Campbell, I have a Buick 88 station wagon with a Corvette engine. I got it in auction. <laughs> Did pretty okay. Yeah, you know, again, but that's like, uh, you know, that's like a, 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 a squire with a warm-up neck, you know. You know, that, that happens, but you're not going to pay top dollar for it. So, yeah, you did pretty okay. All right. Mickey Newman, mainstream media is never good to watch. Yeah. You got to filter, like I said, and, and I, I use that to use as a, again, I like to reach into something else in our lives to apply to this. So that kind of makes a little bit of sense. And, uh, and in, in the markets here in the YouTube and, and the Gibson studio production and all that crap that they're throwing at you. Plus, you know, their agents, uh, the guys who are, who, you know, are promoting them on their channels and, for promote pay promotions and things like that, then you're going to get bombarded with this stuff, and you may think to yourself, "Hey, maybe, maybe there is okay value with that new inspired by Epiphone Gibson." You know, I'm just it's just no, there's not. You know, don't let it sucker you into thinking that there is. There is no value there. There really isn't. And I just demonstrate with the hard numbers that there's not. Ben Allmark talking to Mickey. Uh, ben, absolutely hundred percent all right, Mickey. Uh, Mickey Newman, I did like Epis for years when they were priced decent. And there you go. And then you have this falling away. You'll have the people like me and like Mickey. Um, who I'm starting to think we think a lot alike. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to think me and Mickey, you know, over over time here, I'm starting, we we have a lot of the same thoughts on things. We we walk away. Guys like us walk away. We walk away. Because again, we're not, you know. We know that there are other brands out there that uh, are a better value proposition. Yeah, the Yepis had a great run. God only knows what the future holds for them or any of us. Yeah, well, that's a whole nother thing, man. We got ooh, <laughs> we got bad clouds, juju rolling up here. Um. That's uh, Don Juan Campbell. That's the problem that your YouTubers are promoting that value, but only because their channels are sponsored by their, again, their agents. I call them their agents. Let's call them what they are. They're their agents. You got to be aware of their, you know. A dollar for the Star Wars jar, you know. It's not always, they're not always throwing Vader at you. Sometimes they'll throw the Inquisitors at you. <laughs> And that's what those guys are, if you guys can understand and forgive my Star Wars analogy there. Uh, Frederick Rogers, words of worldly wisdom. Yeah. Yeah, let's keep the world. I'm trying to cut the world out. That's a part of it. Cut the, you know, get the world out of it and just put some common sense into it. And we'll be all right. And <laughs> we'll be all right. They can't fool us. You know, uh, so there again, like I said, you're you're you with a Les Paul. If you're looking to get a USA made Les Paul model, you know now that okay, if it's got Bill, Bill Lawrence pickups in it or it's got T tops in it, I'll pay a little bit more for it, but nothing above 19. And the goal actually is to try to get it as far away from that number on the downside as possible. If you can walk away with 1700, 1650, then you did good. And a lot of people out there will tell you, oh, I, you know, I don't know this magical, mystical land of where I can get a Les Paul standard for $16.50. Again, you know, believe it or not, you can buy it. You, it's going to take some work, maybe, but they're out there and maybe conversations with people. And maybe here in a minute, uh, because it's not getting better in the secondary market, people are going to be forced to make that kind of decision. The question is, Who's going to have that 1650? <laughs> That's a whole separate, you know, thing. Mickey Newman, definitely a black moon rising at the moment. Yeah, man, you know. 
guys, let's just enjoy ourselves. You know, what is that? Uh, let the good times roll. Because <laughs> when it's done, it's done. So let the good times roll. I really advise you that. Because we're way overdue for a global conflict. If you follow that kind of stuff. And we are on the cusp. We're on the cusp. So therefore, you know, maybe you say, screw it. You know, world's going to end tomorrow. I don't mind blowing $14.99 on the same guitar I bought last year for $700. Why the hell not? <laughs> why? Why not? <laughs> Everybody ready for this eclipse or what? Oh, yeah, that's right. The eclipse is happening too. Yes, that's another thing. That's a distraction too. Man, there's been eclipses happening since the dawn of man. And that's not what you, a meteor shower, a, a solar flare, um, any kind of electrical storm. Those are the things you want to worry about. A solar eclipse, eh, it's just, it's just, again, you know, it's the, it's the thing of the week, you know, did P. Diddy do this? Is there a solar eclipse? Are they somehow related? <laughs> Will P. Diddy use the solar eclipse? to get out of America to escape charges. <laughs> it's just stupid distractions. Everybody, um, FRC, thanks for the chat, Mike. It's like a bunch of us sitting around the coffee shop. That's exactly, that's exactly what this channel is. Thank you, FRC, for saying that, because that is indeed, this. that's why we all have our libations. We all have something to drink. Whatever it is, morning, noon, or night, uh, coffee, tea, juice, soda, whiskey, <laughs> beer. And we just sit around here at the Upstairs to the Ride Music Channel doing these live streams. And we just talk about this stuff. We talk it through logically. We try to, we have fun. We'll, we'll joke and we'll laugh and we'll try to have a little bit of fun. But that's exactly what it is. It's a, like I said, it's a, it's like a, a triple A, you know, or AA, you know, anomalous. In our case, it's, it's gas anomalous. So it's a G A B. <laughs> I'm sure the market will tank on new expensive guitars soon. Yeah, yeah, you know we're gonna we're, we're gonna see that, man. Because again, you know, even the guys who have the 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 the, the pockets deep enough to buy these things, they live in a way in this world with us as well, and they may not have the value perception issue but they'll have the inflation perception issue and that always is as was indicated in that article that i was reading is one of the reasons why you see um the drop of sales and they tried to explain why this is but we all have the psyche of it uh yeah and new york people are, are losing about the evils yeah here in amsterdam no different Eclipse not evil. Yeah, the eclipse is an eclipse. It's a solar event. I saw many years ago when that comet went by. I happened, I, I was visiting home from Japan. I flew to Japan, I flew to LA. I remember standing in uh, my parents' study looking out the window and seeing a comet go by. This is like once every 175 you know, year, year kind of event. And I thought to myself, watching that and actually seeing it, I thought to myself, you know, I'm sure this used to scare the bejeebies maybe out of some people a long time ago. But, you know, uh, now I just thought to myself, gee, that's interesting. And it's the same thing with the eclipse. Gee, that's, and people look up and say, gee, that's interesting, you know, and that'll be it, if you can see it, because, you know, there will be clouds too. One day we should go for a coffee in Amsterdam. I would love to have any and all of you, especially you, Mickey, here over in Amsterdam. I would love that. So you are welcome. You know, you got my number. <laughs> Let me know. I'm here. I'm trying not to leave. I'm tired of traveling. This trip to, um, to uh, I contemplated actually going to London on Tuesday this week. Um, but I changed my mind about it to do a quick deal. I contemplated it. But I changed my mind. I just, I, just the idea of traveling just doesn't appeal to me. This trip to Japan is, 
is daunting, but it will pay off. So, uh, yeah, it would be a come to me kind of situation <laughs> these days. I'm trying to break out of it, but I've filled up three passports, guys. I've traveled most, oh, I've hit almost every continent at some point or another. And uh, I'm a little war, a road weary, I guess is a way to put it. That's a pipe dream of mine, making it over there. It looks amazing. It's a beautiful place, man. It's a beautiful city. I think the biggest problem that I have now that I'm four years in here, this is my fourth year. Um, I was thinking about it and I said it out loud. Yeah, you brothers are always welcome anyway. I think after my fourth year of living here in Amsterdam, I've been, I've been visiting here regularly. Sometimes twice a year for the last twenty years. So it's, I'm not, uh, uh, you know, a virgin to the city, so to speak. But it's a beautiful. It, what I like is that I'll turn a corner in a neighborhood that I don't know, and I'll see something beautiful, especially on a beautiful day like this when the sun is out. Always something that you turn a corner, you see something breathy. You turn the corner, you'll see something nasty. <laughs> or in the case of me, when I opened up my front door the other day to walk my dog. There was vomit down at the bottom of the steps. So there's that. Somebody sat on my steps and, and got sick. So that's always a pleasure. That's one thing I that that's new to me. You know, you guys have to remember I spent most of my life in Asia from the time I was in my mid-20s until the last four years and mostly. And uh so, you know, that's a that's still a culture shock for me. But it doesn't turn me off or deter me from this city because it's a beautiful city, beautiful place. My neighbors are beautiful people and uh, for the most part, and um, I'm pretty much well here to stay. <laughs> so you guys are always welcome here. Always, always, always welcome. My friends are always welcome, and you guys are surely that. Well, I think I made my point. <laughs> I'm sorry tonight for the dry. Uh, numbers and statistics but sometimes you know let's put the you know the, the i feels aside and get to the i thinks i don't like to say i feel like no you either think you either do or you do not let's get into the i think and i think the numbers here have uh, proven um that uh, that there's the value perception and the inflation perception on this inspired by Gibson Epiphone line is justified. And our queasiness regarding it is justified. And um, for me, uh, just on the value perception alone, I'm not interested. You know, people can talk about high value and show it, hey, we got the brand new whatever such and such inspired by Gibson line, you know, in and Take a looky here and, you know, what are you really doing there, though, dude? You know, anyway, that's just not, that's not what I'm about. So I can't answer that question. You have to go to that channel and ask them. <laughs> I'm merely here to point out the fact that, hey, that shiny new thing right there has got a hefty markup on it. So buyer beware. Caveat emptor. Uh, great hang tonight, Mike and everybody. Uh, gracias. Take care of our, yeah, you guys take care of yourselves. Uh, and we'll be here on Wednesday. Um, uh, again, a little, uh, bit of a pumper. Go over to, uh, bandcamp.com. Look up Asanoki, uh, albums, Asanoki one and two. My albums that I've put there, buy one, support this channel. <laughs> the money goes directly to supporting this channel. I don't ask for uh, super chats. I don't have any. Patreons or Patreon type issues, the kind of things that I have. No, I ask for your support by merely buying my music, uh, supporting this by going and buying that particular bit of merch. And uh, I would greatly appreciate it. Again, bandcamp.com. Uh, Asinoki is the name of my band. Asinoki 1, 2, 2 albums over there. As, uh, um, Ants in the Pantry and the Asinoki 1 album. Please do so if you get a chance. You guys have a wonderful week. I will see you again with a new topic on Wednesday. Take care and oh yes, and Or or oh hi or uh good You know, depending upon where you are. <laughs> bye bye.